Hello and welcome. This is Matthias 76, and together we are decoding the deception. Together we're decoding the headlines. We're going to start here. We're on my helpful websites page, a place I recommend you become familiar with, have all kinds of great places to get a feel for new sites where you can get a feel for what's going on in the world. Today, we're going to go to the expose, and there, there's so many things that we could talk about, but we're going to land here. IMF chief says central bank digital currency should be used alongside social credit system to control what people can and cannot buy. So we're going to talk about this story. I took the video that is the highlights of this International Monetary Fund confab that they had and the speakers. I put that on my website. I'll show you where you can find that at the end. I will also put the link down below. It's in my video knowledge base. But as I often like to do, I put this article into a PDF and that allows me to scroll it, and annotate it, keep notes for myself more easily. And so we're going to talk about this topic. We're going to analyze what they say, and we're going to interpret, decode what it is they say, because they put everything in code. But let's start with this. Central bank digital currencies. It is a blockchain currency that they're talking about, but it is not Bitcoin or Ethereum or any of those. This will be a new thing that is put out by the central banks, meaning the Federal Reserve and its counterparts around the world, because all countries except for, I think it's three or four, now have a central bank. They will issue this instead of the money that they currently use. The U.S. dollar, as you know it, will be gone. Banking, as you know it, will be gone. This is a programmable digital currency. There will be no paper. There will be no coins in your pocket. And what it allows them to do, and we'll see this as we go through this article, it gives them total control, totalitarianism over finances. Let's take a look at how. We'll start with the first line of the article. The Deputy Managing Director of the International Monetary Fund, IMF, that's the World Central Bank, funded by the Federal Reserve, recently explained how central bank digital currencies, CBDC, can be programmed to determine what people are allowed to buy and insisted they should be used alongside China-style social credit score system. This isn't China talking. This isn't Russia talking. It's not Iran talking. Iran's one of those countries that doesn't have a central bank. This is the managing director of the International Monetary Fund. And they've already decided this is going to happen. They're just trying to warm us up to the idea. These are the speakers right here. This is Bo Lee, that guy that I just quoted and will quote many times. This is Cecilia Skingsley. She's another one of the people that will be quoted. And this is Her Majesty Queen Maxima of the Netherlands. What a humble name, Queen Maxima. The meeting was about global financial inclusion, which they said had improved over the past 10 years, but almost a quarter of the world's adult population are still unbanked. Let's talk about what financial inclusion means. What it means, they use inclusion, what it means is 
control. So you can translate financial inclusion as financial control or financial tyranny. And they're upset that one quarter of the world's population is still unbanked, meaning unenslaved. They haven't been captured within the matrix of financial control, and they need that to change. They're not concerned about these people's financial well-being, the poor in Somalia and wherever else. They don't want anybody who's outside of the system. They don't want you trading a goat for some rice. It's all got to be done through their system, because through their system, they have control. All of these terms that they use, sustainability. You know what sustainability means? Sustainability means they get to, they, the big they, capital T, they, they get to decide how much of it gets used, by whom, and when. And they get to decide when you don't get to use any of it anymore because it's not sustainable. That's where all the carbon credit nonsense comes in. They're switching the world from a system based on wealth to one based on energy, carbon. And then they have control over everything. It is what they are about. With CBDCs, this is Bo Lee, the head managing director of the IMF. With CBDCs, we can precisely control what people can and can't own. Also, what kind of use this money can be programmed for, like food only. It says Bo Lee should be Bo Lee. All you need is the first sentence. With CBDCs, we can precisely control what people can and can't own. Read it again for yourself. That's totalitarianism. That is them. Tyranny. They have control. They get to say, if you buy a car, if you don't buy a car. If you buy beer, if you don't buy beer. If you buy a gun, if you don't buy a gun or ammunition for that gun, and the currency will be programmable. Programmable. You only get to spend so much on carbon-intensive products. You only get to spend so much on energy. You only get to spend so much on food. You only get to spend so much on entertainment. Like a parent telling the child, here's your $10. You can blow two of it. You have to put gas in your car with five, and the other three, you have to do this, this, and this. It is what it is about. This is the group. That's Bo Lee here in the middle. There's Queen Maxima. She is kind of tall. Queen Maxima. And later, we're going to hear from this gal as well. Her, her, she is with Bloomberg. Do you think that... They're not in on this. Bloomberg, CNBC, Fox Business, Financial Times, whatever you want to pick, the Wall Street Journal, they're all in on it. And that is why they are not warning you. That is why they are not on the wall calling this out and saying, hey, there's trouble coming. Boldly again, CBDCs can't solve every financial inclusion challenge. Inclusion, enslavement. But they can work together with financial literacy and digital literacy. By literacy, they mean indoctrination. So they can work together with financial indoctrination and digital indoctrination. We're going to hit you with this info and brainwash you into thinking that this is the best thing for you and for everyone and, of course, for the greater good. So a CBDC would work with other policies like digital identities and digital wallets. So doing, it will form a digital triad of control over you and every single thing that you spend. Now, this next, there's an article and link here that you can click on about digital identity verification is essential to the operation of CBDCs, especially, particularly, in cross-border transactions. 
just as they used the Patriot Act to control how much cash you can have. Go to the bank, if you have it, go to the bank and try to withdraw $20,000. You can't. Even if they have it there, which most of the time they don't, you can't do it. You're only allowed to withdraw up to $10,000 without filling out all kinds of paperwork and having all kinds of red flags thrown up. That wasn't about terrorists. It's not about controlling the drug trade that they run, that they use to control the world. It is about keeping you from having cash because cash is king. Cash is freedom, and they don't want to have you having freedom. That's not allowed. You need to be included inclusive, enslaved by the system. When questioned on how this transactional data, because it's all about data, right? Everything will be monitored. It will all be there. Bo Li explained, I can give you one example in China. Those transaction data can be utilized by service providers and credit underwriting. What you spent on beer, what you spent on fuel, what you spent on vacations and entertainment is now going to come onto the table when you're applying for an auto loan or especially a mortgage or a business loan. And they try to couch it as though that's a good thing. And let's get this stated Clearly right now, the whole credit score system that we all live by, that we're all okay with, you know your credit score. Why? Because they make you think it's important. Because they make that the hurdle that exists for you to jump into their pool, their camp of being a debt slave. If you don't have a good credit score, you can't borrow money from us. We want to know who are debt slaves that they can that we can make money off of them. But more than anything, it's about conditioning you for control. So the masses are going to look at this stuff and say, yeah, well, it's really not all that different than what we have now, not really thinking about it, because they know, they understand they have to jump through hoops to be able to spend their own money as it is. Talking about this, every transaction monitored, everything mined for data, those non-traditional data can be very useful for financial service providers to give me a credit score. And based on that credit score, the service providers can give me a credit line without any face-to-face due diligence. See, it's a good thing. We've all been through that mortgage process. It's a pain. It's onerous. You won't have to do that. They'll just be able to tell you, yeah, you can borrow this money or you can't. Now, the downside is there will be no recourse. You're a slave to the system. And they're going to, he goes on to say, they're going to mine that data and sell it to others so that they can profit off of you and your information at a level that, as bad as it is now, hasn't existed before. And they're not shy about saying this is about a new world order. Notice how that always comes up, whether it's Great Reset or here, Central Bank Digital Currencies. This is Cecilia Skingsley, who I pointed out, the BIS, Bank of International Settlements, Innovation Hub Director, explained, what we just heard from Bo about credit scoring was a very good example of how different countries will take different journeys to a new world where they serve their societies in a digital space. These leaders don't serve their societies now. They enslave them, and that will only go up to a new level with these central bank digital currencies. And she says that it's worth giving up a little privacy just to get security. And we've heard that one before. Think Patriot Act and all the things that the federal government, the federal law enforcement and other agencies can do now. And Jerome Powell, they're quoting him from two weeks ago at the big conference they had in France with all the central bank heads. Most recently, according to the Federal Reserve Chairman 
Jerome Powell, CBDCs won't be anonymous and will be identity verified so their transactions will be made public supposedly to these third parties. There will be no anonymity. You won't just buy something, a uh, old piece of furniture from your neighbor for 20 bucks without them knowing about it because there won't be cash. It will all be digital. Earlier this year at the World Government Summit, aptly titled A New World Order, the economist Pippa Malmgren dropped the beans, spilled the beans, let it out, that we are on the brink of a dramatic change. We are about to abandon the traditional system of money and replace it with a new one, digital blockchain CBDC, which will give us greater clarity over every single transaction. Clarity, translate that, is autonomy, control. There's so much here that we can talk about. My concern is this. Ask four people that you know, what is a central bank digital currency? Just what's a CBDC? They won't know. If you have one who knows, that would be impressive. And try it. Ask people, do you know what a CBDC is? No one knows. They're not telling us about it. They're putting information out there like this. And this thing could easily have flown under the radar. They didn't make a big deal out of it. But you have to understand, this isn't something they're thinking about. It's not something that they're kind of kicking around in the powers that be, but should not. The powers that be are trying to decide whether this is the way to go. No, this is decided. It was decided some time ago, probably decades ago, by the lords of darkness who never creep out into the light but only send their emissaries, their head minions. It was decided by them, and there is nothing to do to stop it. There's nothing to do to stop it. And part of how they will bring it about is total, utter financial crisis and chaos. It will come in as part of the Great Reset. And they're not overstating it when they say great. And, and great doesn't mean good. Huge. The huge reset. It's going to encompass every aspect of our lives, and it's long since been decided. And if you think that which people in a couple weeks you put in the clown car through a election and send to Washington, if you think that's going to change anything, then you are sadly misinformed. Those people are not decision makers. They are policy executors. They do what they are told. They put the policies in place that they are told to put in place. They are not the people in power. That is not the way a technocratic world operates. It is the powerful people in technology, in industry, in banking, in finance, in the world, NGOs, non-governmental organizations, the trilateralists, the Council on Foreign Relations, the World Economic Forum. Those are the people who are at the higher levels. They have people they answer to, but they're the ones at the higher level who give the marching orders to the minions who have the titles of representative, governor, senator, president. I do want to take you from here on our helpful websites page, I'm just taking you, doesn't matter where you are, I'm going to make myself disappear up at the top. So you go across the top, over here at the right, you've got research and resources, our knowledge bases, video knowledge base. If you go there, you could just type in IMF, but you go here, you click banking and government, I've started a video list for CBDC, Central Bank Digital Currencies, click on that right there, and it's going to take you directly to that video on YouTube. Invite you, come out here, knock around, check out all the different resources that we have 
available. We also have a document knowledge base. We've got all kinds of information out here. You want to find Agenda 2030. You want to find those kinds of things. We've got them all out here. I encourage you, before we get to the typical ending, up here at Contact Us, shoot me an email. It's anonymous if you want it to be. I'd love to know where you're from and you can tell me because we have people who come to our website. We're up to people from either 91 or 92 different countries have come to our website and taken advantage of the resources. We have all our Bible videos out here, all of these things. I thank you for watching. I pray that what we do, the information I share, the Bible teaching we do in our other videos, I pray that that is a blessing to you. You giving us a thumbs up tells other people on whatever platform the video is on that it is worthwhile. I invite you to financially support this ministry. It costs money to run this organization. It costs money to put these videos out. You can go here, the financial support. There's a link to it down below as well. You can click there and give us financial support, make it possible for us to not only continue on with what we're doing, but to do even more. I invite you, if you haven't yet, go down below and subscribe. And when you subscribe, hit that notification bell so that we're made, you are made aware when we put out a new video. Also invite you, share this video with someone else. Send it to a friend. Put it out on your social media feed. And as I said before, do drop by and pay us a visit here at our resource center, decodingthedeception.com. This is Matthias 76. Together, we are decoding the deception. God bless. Have a great day.